conceivable that you don't know who they are, but in case you've just wandered in and somehow got a membership without knowing anything about anyone, starting at the end in the lovely red shirt, go. I am Storm Di Costanzo. I am a Thick Tent speaker, musician, writer, producer, CFO. I'm Paul Saborin, and I'm sitting next to Jonathan Colton. Not necessarily a positive or a negative, just a fact. I'm Jonathan Colton, and I have my own fan cruise, bitches. Uh, I'm Molly Lewis, I play the ukulele and write songs, and I have a bachelor's degree in English. Uh, I'm Evan Schletter, and I write funny songs and write music for TV shows. That's my big. I have a theory that uh, comedy songwriting uh, is a little bit uh, like uh, Ginger Rogers. Uh, and the discussion there is that Ginger Rogers uh, was famously said that she does everything that Fred Astaire does backwards and wearing heels. <laughs> uh, and what this means is that when you are a comedy songwriter, not only do you have to do the basic thing that songwriters do, which is write a song people want to listen to, but then you also have to do it amusingly. And uh, so the very first question that I wanted to uh, ask um, is the, the super basic question of how did you actually end up being a comedy songwriter or a humorous songwriter, because there's a little bit of a difference of those, uh, instead of just necessarily uh, someone who's writing songs. How did you get from writing songs into the humor aspect of it? So anyone can start. Jonathan. Uh, I, I'm, I'm just thinking back. You know, the first, the first song I ever wrote was a very sad song about staring at a window covered with frost and feeling sad. And it was really, it wasn't funny, it wasn't funny in any way. That was the very first song I wrote. And then I think I ended up, I was, I was kind of a fan of a, a few different people who used humor in a kind of dark and interesting and revealing way, like They Might Be Giants, uh, uh, Loudon Wainwright was another big influence. Uh, the idea that you could take a, take a subject and make it kind of quirky and write, write something that was funny, sort of, but also, uh, you know, like the larger shape is sad, maybe, or the larger shape is uh, meaningful, but there are there are moments in there that are kind of uh, funny and, and speak to that larger shape in a, in a unique way. So that, I, I don't know, I always, I always liked that in a song, and so when I started writing songs, that's the stuff that I tried to do. Uh, for, for myself, uh, Storm and I have generally written songs together for, Jesus, over 20 years at this point. We were part of an acapella group called Da Vinci's Notebook. Thank you. Four, two, three. And um, we, were, we were originally just a, a pickup hobby group. We sang doo-wop songs and covers, and some of the covers we sang were funny songs by groups like The Bobs. And people responded the best to those songs. And so we wanted to do more of them, and we started, the, the first song I ever wrote was Sword of Vinci's Notebook, and it was a comedy song. And it was, again, just from, you know, it's not like I went to school for it, other than being a really deep fan of those types of songs by people, you know, Weird Al, obviously, Tom Lehrer, Alan Sherman, uh, and a whole bunch of other uh, groups like that. And that's, it was not so much out of necessity, so much as out of give me more of this thing, this positive feedback that we're getting. And that's, that's how we got into the comedy aspect of songwriting. For me, at least. Yeah, no, that's pretty much it. It was, <coughs> hey, this is working, let's do more of that. <laughs> Molly? Uh, I've always written comedy songs for as long as I have been writing songs, because it's kind of the only way I know how to express myself. Um, because I, I was sort of a, I, as I was learning ukulele and before that banjo and before that mandolin and before that guitar um, and sort of tripping all the failure switches that led me to learning ukulele, um, I was covering other people's songs and 
Um, it hadn't occurred to me that I, I certainly had the like, someone should write a song about this Lisa Nowak person. That's fascinating. So Jonathan Colton should write that song. Um, but there was some point when I wrote like a terrible slam poem about MySpace and went, well, this is a terrible slam poem. This is not up to snuff. Wait, what if I sent it to music? <laughs> and that's where my MySpace song came from. And I really actually admire songwriters that don't have to be super literal. I, I'm not very good at writing figuratively, and like the kind of song that John Roderick writes seem like magic to me. I don't understand how you can be so not, uh, yet how you can be so figurative in a song. But comedy songwriting is kind of the only songwriting I know how to do. Uh, for me, I just like writing all kinds of different stuff. Instrumental stuff, serious songs, funny songs, and what happened with me is I was in a, well, when I was in high school, I was in a punk rock band, and we were very obnoxious, and it just kind of came naturally for us to write really obnoxious songs. So, um, then I was in a band with people that were comedians, Greg Barrett and Laura Milligan, and uh, they moved to LA and brought me to LA, and I started, uh, they would do comedy shows and also do music, and so I was just in and around that scene, and, um, so I just started working with all these people and writing songs and doing scoring for their sketches and stuff like that. And I didn't realize that it wasn't like I consciously chose it, but um, you know, all the while I was listening to stuff like Spike Jones and, and Tom Lehrer also, and enjoying all that. I, do, I wasn't really thinking that that's what I would do, but that's where I ended up, so. Uh, Jonathan, I want to actually come back to uh, something that you were uh, talking about. You mentioned that uh, you would write a song and the overall mode would be uh, kind of sad, uh, but individual aspects of it would be funny or something like that. Um, one of the things that I think is really interesting is, I do think that you are, are generally classified as a, a, a humorous uh, songwriter, but sometimes it's not that the songs are necessarily funny in and of themselves, but often that the subject matter is a little off kilter. And I'll give two examples of that. Uh, one is, uh, I'm Your Moon, which I think is just a tremendous, tremendous love song. Um, it just happens to be about Pluto and Charon, who are you know no longer planets. Um, and then the, uh, the, the song that you wrote about Laika, the, the dog. Uh, you mean the one called Space, Space Doggity? Space Doggity. <laughs> Space Doggity. It's an unfortunate title, I still regret it. Yes. <laughs> not a great title, um, but the song is not actually humorous at all. Oh, no. No. Um, but, be that as it may, because of the nature of the subject of the song, it kind of gets classified as, as humor. Would you kind of agree that that is uh, an aspect of, of what you do? Well, yeah, and I think I think that the, you know, it's funny, I, I, I do this, this radio show, this quiz show on NPR called Ask Me Another to Read. Okay. <laughs> time to applaud, you're correct. Um, and we, we, we recorded in Brooklyn uh, at this, uh, this uh, venue called The Bell House, and, and <clears throat> before we start recording, uh, Ophira, the host, does a little stand-up, and I come out and do a song for everybody. And um, what I've discovered is that I don't actually have that many songs that work as comedy songs, because like Paul and Storm, when you are, you know, when you're coming out cold and playing something in front of an audience, the easiest thing to do is to play a song that is funny and that makes people laugh. And there are only a few, there are only a handful of songs that I have that can come out cold and and read as funny because the rest of them are kind of just kind of weird and sad. Um, so I, I think it's true. I think there there is kind of a question about what what is what does comedy music exactly mean? And you know, I don't necessarily think of myself as a comedy musician as much as I think of myself as a, you know, I definitely write about uh, subjects and I definitely use comedic elements, um, but it's not as though I very rarely set out to write a song that is funny. Um, it, but like Molly, it's, it's sort of how I end up expressing myself a lot of the time. It seems like the most convenient way to express a, a, a feeling or a, uh, or a, a character's state of mind sometimes is by telling a joke that reveals something about them. Molly, I see you moving your hand towards 